I'm Mike Mistel. I'm the Social Studies Department Chair at Lake Lakeland Union High School in Minocqua, Wisconsin. Today I'd like to share some uh, a lesson that I used to uh, satisfy Wisconsin's Act 31. Wisconsin was the first state in the country to have a law that, uh, that mandates schools teach about Native American history, Native American culture, tribal sovereignty, and treaty rights in the classroom. Uh, and this is a lesson that I use in my classroom. The concept of this lesson is assimilation. Uh, the United States government had a policy where uh, a goal for Native American people to convert to a white person's culture. And in doing so, the boarding schools were an example of a government program that was, uh, that was done. That program started in 1875. Uh, in that time period, the United States government, uh, there was a man called Richard Pratt. He was a, a Civil War general, and Richard Pratt had uh, taken about 30 adult men, Native American men, that had been found guilty of crimes and were going to be sentenced to die. Well, Richard Pratt, who I usually refer to as a well-meaning white man, he wanted to help Indian people, and he felt that the best way of doing that was to remove Indian people's culture and replace that with white culture. And that was really a, a prevailing attitude of many people in, in our country at the time. And so Richard Pratt uh, took those men to a fort in Florida, and at that fort created a school. Uh, at the school, uh, things that were done at the boarding school, for example, uh, giving haircuts, cutting their long hair short, uh, changing from a traditional clothing to a European style or American style of clothing, uh, the, the men at the, uh, the school there were given uh, military uniforms, uh, changing their name to a Christian name, changing their religion from their traditional Native American beliefs to Christianity, uh, changing their language to English, uh, changing their food, and, and really everything about them except for their skin color. That boarding school experience uh, was very harmful. There were several men that died on the journey there one that was shot while trying to escape the train. And uh, some of the Native men uh, enjoyed the experience and some did change to the, the white culture of the day and followed that the rest of their lives. And some of the men, when they returned home, went back to their Native culture. Well, the next experiment that was done with Richard Pratt was taking the children. And many of the children of American tribes were taken uh, he was the, the leader of Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania. And many of them were taken there with even out their parents' consent or knowledge. So the boarding school at Carlisle uh, also includes a cemetery. Many of the students that went there died, some from disease, some from uh, may, have, may have been beaten to death, and some may have died from sadness and loneliness. So it really proved to be a very harmful time period for Native people in our country. Uh, the assimilation, trying to remove native traditions and, uh, and uh, change that to white culture was really something that was very similar to what America did to the immigrant populations in America. Uh, immigrant children, for example, didn't speak their own languages at school. They spoke English in, in other examples. Although the immigrants were not punished so severely uh, during that time period, but it is really a very similar concept. Uh, the lesson that I use then, I start with a video uh, called In the White Man's Image. And so that video, which is about an hour-long program, and I'll break that up into two class periods and use that over two, uh, two days in my class with some discussion of the main topics, uh, that tells the story of those two uh, episodes, the adult men and then the children. So that's a good introduction into uh, the concept of assimilation and what happened at the boarding schools. Then I'll also use uh, more recent materials for example, uh, local here to Monaco, Wisconsin is Lacto Flambeau Reservation. The Lacto Flambeau Ojibwe uh, have been a longtime resident here in northern Wisconsin, and there was a boarding school in Lacto Flambeau. So I do have several stories uh, which are included in my lesson plan that I use in my classroom uh, that really mirror very much the, the video in the white man's image. So they can see from several different sources and different time periods some of the treatment that happened at the boarding schools. Well, that boarding school time period was very detrimental to Indian people. Uh, many of the, of the people of the time uh, turned away from their traditions. Many people forgot their native language, uh, forgot about their customs, 
and really created a generation of people that felt very lost. Many of the, the people that survived from the boarding schools did not share their experiences with their children. Uh, so there, many of our current Native people today don't have the, the foundations and maybe the training in Native American culture as they would have had their parents been willing to share that and continue that. But uh, many of the parents tried to uh, have their children avoid the pain and suffering that they felt. For the culminating project for the assimilation unit, I have students create a project. In that project, they design their own dream school. Uh, and so as looking at the boarding school as one attempt or one model of uh, education for Native American children that was oftentimes unsuccessful, I asked them to create one that would be more successful. So they create a PowerPoint or a Google slide or a Prezi, whichever type that they prefer, uh, that includes at least five components. And the five components of the project are a mission statement, uh, and I use our Lakeland Union High School mission statement and talk about that and, and explain how the parts of our school really relate to our mission statement. So they have to create a goal for their school. The name, the mascot, and logo, uh, which they usually have a lot of fun with that. The curriculum, what's going to be taught at their school. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach similar topics, and so students can design their own curriculum. Uh, the staff. If they were the administrator of a school, what type of staff would they hire? What type of characteristics and experiences would they be looking for in their staff members? And then finally, the discipline plan. And that's one that students don't often think about being a participant in. Uh, they oftentimes have negative experience with discipline plans. But any successful school has to have a discipline plan. And so that's a, a big challenge, I think, for the students to think in that way. Uh, once the, the students have created their schools and they present them to the class, and really, when you have a, a classroom of students, uh, I usually do that as a group project. So there might be, oh, five or seven uh, different schools created. They're really very different from each other. And that's really fun to look at the differences in uh, how they approach a, a common set of rules for a project, but they come out with very different outcomes. Um, the other part of that lesson is that usually when it comes to the staff, Native American students oftentimes say, they wish there were more Native American teachers, and they feel that they might have somebody to go to in a school. Uh, they feel that they might be better understood, uh, and that they would might they might be able to learn better from a Native American teacher. Well, that's sometimes that's something that's out of our control as a classroom teacher uh, or as a student. Uh, we're not the ones that do the hiring, but I do tell the students that all of us are teachers, and so that's really a great training uh, aspect uh, to for high school students to look at themselves as knowledgeable uh, in their culture and then being willing to share that. And that kind of opens up the door to uh, other lessons that I do later on in the semester where the students actually do become teachers. Uh, and I have taken students from my Native American history class, taken them into my American history class, and say a junior or senior Native student becomes a presenter in a freshman class. And that, that's a way of having more Native people teach in the classroom uh, without necessarily having to be certified teachers or college graduates. And so the students, I think, uh, enjoy that experience and they really like that idea of giving back and for a younger student to see them as being an expert. So that's my lesson about assimilation and the boarding school uh, experience in the United States history. And uh, hopefully that's something you can find useful in your own classroom. So thank you for watching.